I'm Martin. It's midweek. These are my musings. This is the Martin's Midweek Musings podcast. Hiya folks and welcome to my podcast. This is my personal journal, a place where I share my thoughts on the week I've just had and answer those burning questions. Or in the case of this week, 20 quickfire questions posed to me by my good lady wife, Morag. So we'll get to that in a minute. Just want to very quickly um, say, where's my feedback, guys? No feedback this week. Nothing. Oh, but technically there's not. There's nothing on, on the comments on YouTube or on, on the podcast audio podcast. There was a couple of comments I saw from the guys in the Discord saying that um, they, were, they were catching up with it. So they, they weren't listening to it and that they enjoyed it. So that was nice to hear. Um, so moving on to this week's big question which isn't, as I've said, a big question. It is, in fact, 20 quickfire questions. I went on to, a, I had a quick Google search, and I went. I found a site called Elfster, which I think we used for our Secret Santa, uh, our Brickatech Secret Santa, for organising that last year. Um, and on there, it had a list of, like, 160, 200 questions, quickfire questions. Dum, dum, dum. So what I've done is I've taken them questions, sent them to my good lady wife, and she has then selected 20 of them to ask me. So earlier on, we sat down and she asked me those questions. So here it is. Enjoy. Question one. Favourite holiday? Honeymoon to Rome and Sri Lanka. Correct answer. <laughs> Question two. Invisibility or super strength? Ooh. Super strength. Question three. Favourite childhood TV show? Oh. I used to like Thundercats. Thundercats. Thunder, 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 <laughs> Is that your answer? Yeah, we'll go with it. Is that your final answer? Would you like to put we'll go with it. Would you like to ask we'll audience? We'll go with it. Oh no, there's not any audience. Okay, wrong show. Why can't we tickle ourselves? <laughs> Who chose these questions? Why can't we tickle ourselves? I think it's to do with your sensory system knowing that it's you doing it, so it expects the feeling on your nerves. Well, that was a very good answer. I would just have laughed. Question five. Would you rather cuddle with a baby panda or a baby penguin? Penguin. Discuss. Excellent. Discuss. Penguins are cute. Don't get me wrong, I like pandas, but pandas, yeah, they can be, you know, a bit bad attitude. I like a penguin. Penguins have got happy feet. Thank you. You, you got it. You got it. You got it. You got to get it. Get it all. Oh. Hey. They're all week. <laughs> You're all week, yeah. Oh, just one night only. Question six. Oh. Are reindeers real creatures? Of course they are. I've met them. And they can fly. Have you fed them or just met I, them? I think I fed them. They may have snuffled stuff off my hands. That counts as feeding them. Yes, yeah, so I've definitely fed reindeers. Definitely real. Although, to be fair, I'm not sure about the flying part. I think you need Christmas magic for that. You have fairy dust for that. Question seven. Are women complicated? <laughs> Extremely. I don't even <laughs> want to think about um, don't you do... Sorry. Was it that or that it wasn't that funny? <laughs> <laughs> yes, extremely complicated. I wouldn't even want to think about the Haynes manual, it'd be far too heavy to pick up. <laughs> and am I forgiven for giving you that question? <laughs> question eight. If you could ask God one question, what would it be? Pam V do, Pam V. Fair. Why me, God? Why me? Explain. It's in the Welsh TV programme, and I suppose see from when I was at university, um, there was a, a, a programme called Pam V do, which is Why me, God? So that's and your that question. That was my question. Why me? Why you got such a good life? Exactly. Okay, that's fine then. Question nine. Favourite type of muffin? Banoffee. I think the combination of banana and the toffee in a muffin. Yeah, that's, that, that is like the... the Banoffee. 
Mm. <laughs> it's time for observation. We are explaining the Bonoffi puppet. Well, then I'm not thinking of peanut butter. No, that will stick with Bonoffi. Just your first answer for me, please. Question 10. I think we're halfway there. Whoa! Living on a prayer. Make a high pitch sound that isn't that. <laughs> yeah! It's a high pitch in the prayer. I think the dogs next door heard that oh. one. I think the dogs, the far side of Scotland, heard that one. Question 11. If the toilet paper roll is really low, but not completely out, uh -huh. do you replace it like a kind person would, or do you leave it for someone else to do? I'm not going to lie, I'd probably leave it. It's better than getting to the end of a roll and then just sticking another one on the end of it, <laughs> like somebody around here does. <laughs> well, at least you've got one there. <laughs> Question 12. When people stand up for a standing ovation, are you usually one of the earlier people to stand up or one of the later people to stand up or latter? I think one of the earlier, <coughs> usually. I would say usually one of the earlier. Unless I don't feel like it deserves a standing ovation, in which case I'll drag my heels. But usually, it's the, the, it's the start. I'm, I'm an early one. Get up and... I certainly did at Moulin Rouge anyway. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> I was definitely one of the same things. <coughs> that's what I was thinking. Question 13. I'm looking for something. And for you. What's the most number of hours you've watched TV in a single day? How many hours in a day is it? 24? Yes. So I can't believe you just asked 25 me 25 hours. That, no. Number of hours. I did try and do... You can't have done 25 hours. No. I remember doing or trying to do you a do marathon. You did the Lord of the Mountains times doing a Red Dwarf Marathon, round about when it came out with Series 6, and I think we tried to watch it beginning to end, <coughs> but half hour an episode, six episodes, three hours, six, three times six, 18, about 18 hours. Oh, well, you were good at maths. To be fair, we fell asleep and, and woke up to find out that Princess Di had died. Um, so that wasn't the best attempt at staying okay, awake to watch so what's the most embarrassing you've watched TV in a single day then? I actually watched TV in a day... Probably about 12 or 13. A full day of binging. And they won't ask what snacks you had under that. Quite a few. Question 14. If there's a spider in your house, do you, do you kill it or set it free? I get my wife to remove it. That's the honest answer. And what do you do? If and if she's not here, I kill it. What do you do if you find a spider in your house? Do we play a little game called the Flawless Lava? Yes, and we know that from my last, last episode. episode. See, I've been paying attention. I've Some, been, somebody's been watching. I've been watching. Question 15. Say something cool. How do you do it? Oh, smooth operator. Question 16. What's the lamest dessert dessert that people try to pass off as a dessert? Bread and butter pudding. <laughs> Either that or Swiss roll. I mean, Swiss roll is it's a, it's a slice of cake. It's not a dessert. But I do think bread and butter pudding is bread and it. Bread and butter butter. And a bit of dried fruit. Exactly. I mean, I mean who puts dried fruit in prison? It? Pretty lame. Who puts dried fruit in prison? Well, prison. If it's a Christmas pudding, it'd be a bit lacking without. <laughs> but bread and butter pudding, nah, forget <laughs> it. Lame. Next. Is that going to be 101? Totally. <laughs> 101. It's going on the conveyor belt and off the end. <laughs> Question 17. How would you rate your karaoke skills on a scale of one? To Mariah Carey. That girl needs to move over. I'm up there, baby. Confident much? Okay, we'll go with about a three. <laughs> <laughs> Pick yourself down. Three for, three for quality, ten, ten for, for enthusiasm. Ten for enthusiasm and effort. Enthusiasm yeah. and effort, yeah. Fair enough. Didn't mean to answer the question for you, sorry. <laughs> question 18. When eating a formal meal with multiple forks, do you... 
Pick up the fork and twirl it around in your hair. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm thinking of a little mermaid, sorry. Do you start from the outside or inside? I find this really... Sorry, was that That's not the question. question, no. I'll repeat outside myself. Outside to inside, When Come on. eating a one, formal one meal has... with multiple forks, do you start from the outside as in this bit or the inside as in this bit? One knows one's etiquette. Does one, one know that? Does from one? the outside I think you must have that off. And one drinks tea with one spoon. <laughs> okay, question 19. If there was a hair in your soup at a restaurant, would you return it? Well, it depends how easy it was to find out whose it was. I mean, they might not want me back. <laughs> yes, I would return the soup to the kitchen for... Uh, Analysis. I want to know whose it is, why it's in there. I want a full synopsis of its life. And we do that at every restaurant. Especially the one you work at. And you say that. Final? Yeah, sorry. And the final, final, final countdown. Anyway, we're not in it anymore. Come on. Anyway, question to my D. I nearly did it there. Tell me what you would like to do on weekends in the style of someone from the Welsh Valleys. Well, you see, I quite like go play trains, I do. Me and Jones the steam up the valleys, you see. I'd quite like to go and shovel some coal in that there engine, I would. And I like to play with Lego as well. I do like a bit of Lego. Oh, especially at the weekends, see. And maybe have a few babies. Will that do? And have you gone to visit Ivor yet? I'm off to, uh, yeah, that's exactly it. I'm off to see Ivor. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and on that note, that. thank you very much, Morag, for being Quizmaster there. <laughs> Until next I don't time. I think I got that. a choice. <laughs> Happy Easter. I'm not going to make. Happy Easter. Back to me. Happy in Easter. In the other studio. <laughs> Did you enjoy that? Because I know I certainly did. That was a lot of fun answering those questions. Some of them made me think, actually really think. And it's like, it's it's 20 past 10 on a Wednesday night. And that was recorded about half an hour ago. And uh, I've had a long day at work. And some of those questions, I really had to kind of think. <laughs> I hope she hasn't picked all the best ones. Because with 160 questions, 20 questions this time, that's eight times we can sit down and do that. So, uh I look forward to doing that again at some point. And um, it was nice to get her on because I think she actually really enjoyed doing it. So there you go. It turns out that I can speak in a Welsh accent. See, I do apologise to anybody Welsh uh, for the terrible accent and um, anybody else that, <laughs> that I may have upset with those answers. So that was my questions of the week. Hopefully you know me a little bit better now. Um, that is the aim of these questions is to try and get to know me a little bit better. So, what's this week look like to me? Well, it's been Easter week. No, this last week has been Easter week. Cumul cumulating? Climaxing? Finishing on Easter Sunday. Um, which was this past Sunday. And I was at work, so unfortunately I didn't get to spend much time with the family celebrating um, celebrating Easter Sunday. Um, we did get the I did get the kids up ridiculously early for their Easter eggs though before I went to work about half past six in the morning. Um, I think that was possibly a regretted decision by bedtime when they were cranky as anything, but uh, they seemed to have a good day, which is good. Um, anyway, so starting off with as I normally do, what have I listened to this week? Well, no real surprise, I've listened to my usual podcasts, um, and again, I've been using sort of the extra time to listen to some extra podcasts from the Delta Flyers, listening to some of the stuff about their episodes. And the episode that I've um, listened to this week of their podcast, uh, based on the end of Series 3 moving into Series 4, where they introduced Jerry Ryan's character of Seven of Nine, who has gone on to be a very popular character, and he's currently a character in the Picard series that I've been watching weekly. Um, so this was around the time that... They got to the end of Series 3, and it looked like one or two characters could be getting written out at the end of Series 3. Harry Kim, who is 
um, played by one of the hosts of this podcast. He was dying on a bio bed. And then you also had the character of Kez, uh, played by Jennifer Yen. Um, and there was talk that she might be leaving, especially with a new female character already announced that was coming in in season four. And um, yeah, by all accounts, the rumours about Harry Kim leaving, about Garrett Wang being written out, um, he said there was never anything that he'd heard about that, but apparently it was just rumours. But it was, of course, Jennifer Yen as Kez leaving, and she left in about the second episode. So I've been listening to the podcast where they've been discussing those two or three episodes in the Voyager story, and it was quite interesting just to hear their, their take on that. Um, and how they didn't really remember some of the bits about um, when Seven of Nine gradually toned down the, the Borg implants and the Borg outfit and went into the jumpsuit. Um, and they were also saying how some of it, the you could tell it was the 90s because, excuse you, you could tell it was the 90s um, because of kind of the style of the shots. It was a, some of it felt a little bit gratuitous, basically. Um, it was like body shots on Seven of Nine in this tight, tight outfit. Um, yeah, I mean, in this day and age, I would like to think that maybe we, we wouldn't have them kind of shots. It doesn't, Star Trek doesn't, well, nothing needs those kind of shots. But at that time, that was more sort of acceptable and it was more, more of the style of what it was. So it's interesting to hear their takes on it and how they felt about it then and how they feel about it now. So that was my podcast uh, I'm listening to. Um, I didn't hear one this week from my Enterprise, Star Trek Enterprise podcast. Um, I didn't see one on there, so maybe maybe I've just missed it. So I'll get to catch up on that this coming week. What else have I been listening to? That was it. I was driving to work on Easter morning and um, I didn't have a, a podcast to listen to. And I, I, I connect my phone in to the car so that I can listen to Spotify to my podcast. But also, if I want to listen to anything in particular, I can I can just press the microphone button and I might Google play X, Y, Z, play music from Encanto, play music from musicals, play some rock. So I'm driving and, I, and it was quite a nice sunny-ish morning. I thought, I just feel like some classic 80s cheese. So I'm like, Google, play some 80s, 80s classics on YouTube Music. And there was some absolute corkers. I'm sorry about that. If you're watching this, I'm sorry. I keep playing with my hair. I've not got much of it these days. So uh, I'm a little bit I have. I play with um, absolute corkers. It made me want to go back and watch films like Top Gun um, and, and things like that. And yeah, I, I, 80s music is definitely my jam. I def, well, 80s and 90s. Because um, 90s, obviously, I was growing up to the 90s with the likes of Oasis, Blur. Pulp, Supergrass, the Manic Street Preachers, at least if you're British, they're the kind of the bands and things. Um, Radiohead, um, things like that. But then, obviously, you've got to look back at the 80s, you've got classics, absolute classics. Um, and, and there were some real bangers came on when I was driving to work. Um, it was really, really good to have that um, going into Easter morning, feeling bright and breezy and really good. So, yeah, that was, that was what I've listened to this week. I've listened to some 80s classics as well as my podcast. Uh, moving on to my, my watch for the week. Uh, as I've already mentioned, I have watched the most recent episode of Picard, which was a bit of a strange one because half of it was kind of set inside Picard's mind. And it was kind of the memories of his childhood where it seemed like he had an abusive father, but then there seems to be a twist about halfway through where it seems like his mother actually had some mental health issues. And it was the way his father was dealing with that. And and it, it's amazing that Picard has got to the ripe old age of whatever he is in his 90s. Um, and now he's having his daddy issues. Um, and he's resolving his daddy issues. So that was kind of a good half of, of the episode was kind of covering that. And the other half was kind of covering the whole bog crossed with the Dr. Girati sort of storyline. And, and then... And then Rios admitting to the the, the twenty twenty four nurse that no twenty yeah year twenty twenty four and yeah the nurse from twenty twenty four that he is actually from the future he's a he's a spaceship captain and totally breaking the prime directive um of non and temporal temporal directive about not interfering in the past 
So that 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 was quite an interesting. I, I'm kind of up and down about the episode. Some of that I liked, some of that I didn't like. It, you know, I'll see where it goes from here. We can only have another about three episodes left, I think. What we are, yeah. So that was episode seven. I imagine there's only ten episodes. We've only got three left to go of this season. So they, I would imagine they're going to bring this story arc to an end and not going to just do a, an arch over two two seasons. Especially given that we've heard that in season three we're getting more of the next generation crew back. So who knows? Um, we'll see where it goes from that. So that was what we watched. I watched on, on my sort of TV shows. Um, but then Morag and I sat down the other night and we watched Inferno, um, based on the Dan Brown novel. Um, not read the book, but I have. Um, I'm now tempted to read some of the Dan Brown novels. And I have seen Angels and Demons and I have seen. What's the famous one? Morag will kick me for this. What's that? The, the Da Vinci Code. Da Vinci Code. Yeah, um, part of which is set not far from us here in Scotland. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't know much about Inferno, but it was quite graphic. And there was a lot of blood and a lot of fire and burning and, and following on from last week's episode. Um, it was kind of weird, you know, because there was, there was people drowning, there was people burning and and then the, yeah it was it was quite interesting um and i don't remember having seen it before and more i didn't think she'd seen it before but then having watched it there's times we went i recognize that scene i remember this bit in the cavern sort of the 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 bit under the building in the water and and being in i think it was was it venice towards the end and it's that was another thing there are these aerial shots of venice now i've never been to venice I always imagined it as like being, imagine sort of London, but very much landlocked. But if it had canals and things through it, that's how I kind of imagined Venice to be. Whereas you get these aerial shots of Venice in, in the film and it almost looks like a big island with some bridges to it. But then with all the canals kind of through that, making it lots of dotty little islands. And that's just not how I imagined Venice. So... I learnt something from watching that film. At the age of 42, I learnt a little something about Venice. I thought it was quite interesting that you can see the railway coming in and into the railway station in Venice. And it literally comes across a long bridge. Kind of, I'm doing all these gestures. They're off camera. You can't see them. Um, but, yeah, I find that quite interesting. Um, one thing I did notice is Tom Hanks is looking old. I don't know if he was meant to look old. Um, but he certainly looks older than I remember seeing him in other films. So I don't know if that was more of his... I don't even know when Inferno came out. I don't. Um, but I, I enjoyed it. Uh, it was a good film. Thoroughly, really, thoroughly really enjoyable film. Um, I feel like I want to go back and watch some of the other Dan Brown novel films um, featuring Tom Hanks and the same characters. Well, the, as the main character in the main sort of universe that they're in. So that was really quite quite an enjoyable film. I'd definitely give Inferno a four. Maybe four and a half even. It, it, was, it was a good film. Um, so... That's my thoughts on that one. And then what we've been playing this week, well, it's just been really... Well, for me, I've played a little bit more on the Skywalker Saga, the Lego Skywalker Saga on the Switch. Um, I've, I've not had a lot of time. It's, it has actually been quite a busy week, what with it being Easter, and obviously the shop that I work in has been quite busy over Easter, and we my store manager on holiday last week as well, or this week, that, this sort of week that we're talking about. Um, he was on holiday, so that put a bit more... So, so I would say pressure. So I don't know if you say pressure or just a little more responsibility onto myself and and my uh, fellow assistant manager. So puts that a little bit of pressure on. It also, maybe up my game a little bit. Maybe a little bit more. I said, yeah, it was a good kind of. It was kind of a good week. There was a few negatives, few, some but mainly positives. So um, just kind of talking about work, which I try not to do on here. Um, but yeah, it was a busy week, so I didn't actually get a lot of time doing the Skywalker side game. But we did. He has finished the episode one. He's finished the Phantom Menace. And by finish, I mean he's worked his way through the storyline. He's now going back. Excuse you again. I do apologise if you're listening to this and you keep hearing the bleeps. I'm sat at the computer and I really should have turned off the sound. If you bear with me one second, let me just... Turn that right down. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, 
so yeah, he's he's now going back and he's trying to collect some of the bits and pieces that he missed and do some of the side missions and challenges, um, which he's enjoying doing. I don't think he minds too much not going any further. What I want us to do is try and play the game at the same sort of rate. And because I don't get as much time to play it, he's kind of being held back from playing episode two. Maybe I should let him go with it, but I want to be there to help explain the story to him. Because obviously he, can't, he can read, but he can't read that level. Um, he's not quite that good. He might be my child genius, but he's, he's not that good. Sorry, dude. <laughs> if you're listening to this, like, when you're in your 20s or something, and he's going, he really didn't think I was very clever, and I was, I could have done it, you know. Um, that would be quite interesting if he just watched these back, like, in 15, 20 years' time. Um, yeah, so he's he's doing that. He's also been going back and playing his Pikmin. He's been playing a bit more Mario Kart today. And, um, yeah, the other games that we've got on there are a bit of Sonic. So he, he's getting, you know, the, the Switch was definitely a good purchase back at, uh, for, for Santa Claus back at Christmas um, to, to have got. So that's what we've been playing this week. Playing with things, not the Switch. Um, Lego. Uh, this week, and we got some more of the Lego. Well, I said we. I actually didn't have the opportunity. This was done while I was at work. But the rest of the family, they built up some more of the Easter sets. And there's a set that, that we do built up. And he did most of it and got most of it right by all accounts. And it's actually like a, a carrot house. It's the, it's the Easter Bunny's house, but it looks like a carrot. Um, and I built that one last year. So he's built that one this year. And he did really, really well with it. So I'm rather proud of him for that. And I find it hard to believe that, that we girl built the chicken brickhead. Um, what I think has happened there is Morag has pretty much put the pieces almost together and she's kind of pushed them together. Um, but she built that and then there's a brickhead sheep that I think Morag probably built as well. So they built some more of the Easter sets. We didn't get all our Easter sets built this year. Um, I just didn't have the time to, to do it myself with them as well. Um, and yeah, I'm finding with, obviously with, with Daniel at school now, there's not as much time to do the fun things like that. Uh, maybe you need to make more time. I say, I find myself saying this a lot on my podcasts, that I need to make more time. I need to make more time for this. I need to make more time for that. But I'm not finding time to make that time. Um, so maybe that's something I need to work on. Let me all find time to work on that. Um, other things that they've been playing with this week as well is the Duplo. The Lego Duplo has been dug out. That's been in boxes for ages. Um, neither of them have really played with it. And then, sort of, at the beginning of the week, all of a sudden, the Duplo was out. And there was a, a train track running right around the We Do Dream. Um, and not just that, he'd then sort of taken... Because he had the, the Duplo passenger train set, um, which is battery operated. But then one of the first sets he ever got when he was really wee was a numbers train which has got some like push along carriages with numbers one two three four five six seven eight nine and then there's a zero that's extra um and he'd used those bases to build more wagons to make this longer train now that the, the, the battery train can't pull it it's just too heavy but he had a go um but i was just quite impressed with the way he built it up and and going back to duplo even though he plays with his lego and the wee girl had joined in as well so it was just nice to see them playing together almost nicely uh, with the Duplo and digging it out because um, I was thinking, beginning to think that like the Duplo wasn't going to get any more use and it might be time to move it on to uh, release some funds to buy something else. And that's what we've been playing with. So that brings us to AOB, any other business? And yeah, funds. Ooh. So as mentioned previously, uh, Mora had her accident in the car and the car got wrote off. And so this last week we have been car shopping um, and I'm not going to lie, I did not relish the idea of going car shopping with Morag with the two children. If it was just me and Morag, I would have been a lot more confident going and doing it. But I was really concerned about keeping the kids occupied while we were trying to look at cars in these dealerships. Um, Especially knowing that we were going in with not the hugest budget and we were being quite specific about what we wanted, what Warag what wanted for her car, and knowing the limitations that we had. And, and yeah, it took, to, it took us about four garages before we finally found one where they found us something that 
um, suited. And it was perfect because it was the identical model, colour, everything that Morag had seen in a car that was available secondhand. But it was down in Morecambe. And it was like, well, with the price of petrol, you might as well just put up another hour of many hundred pounds worth to the car rather than to get something local than go right down there. Plus, we were a bit concerned about the mileage, but we talked about it and uh, we found a lovely little Ford Fiesta. Um, it's like a turquoisey blue with sporty trim. It's a really nice wee car she's got. Um, I, I'm really, really happy for her that she got the car she wanted. Uh, it was just by chance because we, we were talking to the guy and he's going, we've got this, 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 this. And we were doing our best to avoid finance. We didn't want the, the extra debt. Um, and so we'd seen a few outside and there, there was a Fiesta there, but it was a white one. And it was like, like 57 or 53,000 miles. And we can dismiss that because of the mileage. But then he's like, uh, well, we've got this one. It's not out there at the moment because it, it's still being processed, ready for, for going out on the front lot. He said, I can take you and show you it. It's 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 a Fiesta. I'm like, okay, fair enough. And so, so we went and looked at it. And it was when we when more I saw that it was the blue, uh, like the turquoise sparkly blue that she liked. It was just like, yep, okay. Tell us the rest of the details. And he, he told us the mileage, which was over 50,000, which was higher than we wanted. But like I said, we discussed the amount that more I was going to be using it, what she's going to be using it for, and how kind of my car is the family car, which is if we're going on holiday or we're doing long journeys or going anywhere, we generally use mine. And, and hers is more really for a run around and to get her to and from work, which is now very local, having given up one of her jobs, which was a half hour commute. The other job that she'd taken on is five minutes down the road. So it could be walkable if, if fuel prices keep going up, it's walkable. So, um, yeah, so she got this. We decided actually, yeah, we'll compromise on that one, and 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 we and she got it. So she uh, this was on the Saturday before Easter, so so we agreed that we would purchase that car, and and she's been back together this week, and it's lovely. <coughs> Excuse me. So that was Morag's car. Um, there was one day last week that I was with the two kids and. I popped into um, Aldi, not my Aldi, not the one I work in. I went into a separate one. And um, there was just the one till open. Now, if you know at the way Aldi's works, if, if you're not familiar with it, they kind of have longer checkouts than other supermarkets and they're, they have less staff. So basically, if the queue builds up, then they'll open another till and a member of staff will come off the shop floor They'll serve until the queues go down, then they'll shut off and go back to doing whatever they were doing, be it stocking up, being it date checking, be it cleaning, be it decarding, be, be it whatever they were doing. And depending on, on how busy it gets, they could open one, two, three tills or close down to one till. So I'm in the queue and, and the, the queue's built up a little bit. And um, there's one woman beyond the belt in front of me with a basket and then myself with a trolley and the two children. And then a couple of people behind. And so it's like, till number three is opening. Please make your way to till number three. So the lady in front of me goes to head across. And I thought, well, she's only got a basket. I've got a trolley. By the time she's got hers unloaded and she's been served, I'll have unloaded, no problem. So I starts to follow her. And this older gentleman behind me starts to whoosh, try and go down the outside. And I just saw red. And I, I was maybe a little stern, shall we say. I was a little... I wouldn't say I was rude to him. I would just say that sort of my tone of voice said, look, pal, <laughs> I, I, what I actually said was, excuse me, sir, I think you'll find there's a queue and you are behind me. That was maybe maybe that's a little condescending. Maybe I was a little rude, but I just it's just like, you know, I mean, it's a very British thing to queue. But this guy was behind me and he just seemed to think he, he could just race around past me. I thought, you, you, I've got the kids here. I'm trying to juggle the kids and a trolley and you're trying to push past me. And oh, it was it was it was so it was a bit frustrating. But that's not the best bit. We're in me and I were unloading the trolley onto the belt and he comes in behind us on the thing. And Daniel starts saying, there's the rude man. And I'm like, Daniel, shut up. Please just be quiet. It's bad enough that I've I've semi made a scene already, and you're going the naughty man, and it's like shush, just shush. <laughs> and so he gets out past, and I'm just packing up my bags, and the man comes walking to go past us, and, and he's like, "There's the naughty man." I'm like, "Oh, Daniel, please, 
please. I was mortified, absolutely mortified. I really was. Um, so moral of the story is uh, when kids are about, um, just, just be on your best behaviour because they won't let you forget if you're not. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the, the funny story with Daniel this week. Other story about Daniel this week is that he's been for his COVID jag. Um, we got his letter in to go and get his jag. And um, it was funny because we joked, I think I may have mentioned this in last week's, we joked with another one of the parents in the playground about, oh, you watch, I bet they'll send it and it'll be, boom, right on their birthday or on the birthday weekend. And sure enough, it came in and the time and date that we've been given were right after his birthday party is booked for. Um, we probably could have made it to it, but it would have been tight with finishing the party and then trying to get cleared up from the party and then getting him to the hospital for a jack. So we rang up and got it changed and we got it changed for this past Saturday. And I'm glad to report that it all went very well. Now, we went to the same place that I went for my booster. Now, when I went for my booster, I went for my allotted time and I waited an hour and a half in a queue to get to the reception desk before I even got off to the place to then go and wait and, and get my booster. Thankfully, having organised it for about 10 past five in the afternoon or something like that, by the time we got there, this was the day that we got the car, um, by the time we'd done that, uh, we got there and I took him in and walked up and there's this long corridor where I've been stood, probably not a person about, up to the end of that, not a person about, across the dump dump up the stairs, still not a person about, and literally to the desk, to the reception desk, straight in, nothing. It was like, oh, thank goodness for that. And the funny thing was, we got to this reception desk, and there was the lady behind, and there was just a chair sat next to it, and he starts taking his jacket off and rolling his sleeve up, and it's like, you're not getting your jag here, mate. <laughs> you need to come up into the wee ward thing to get your, get your injection. So it was really, really good. They'd done like, um, like a safari sort of trail, like a, a kind of a spot the animals kind of thing. And they had probably about two or three of each animal around the walking route of the ward up to where you would get your jag and then where you come back and you wait for your five, ten minutes before leaving. And, and so he got a sheet with all these pictures on and he had to find them and tick them off like a treasure hunt. And then the best bit was at the end, you turn the sheet over and it's a bravery certificate, which the nurse signs to say that he was dead brave at the end. So I thought it was a really good way to, to help the children with their nerves, not be scared. And he took it like a trooper. He sat there. He's never had an injury. As far as best of my knowledge, in, in sort of his age where he'd remember, he's never had a jag. He's never had an injection. And he sat there and I saw his face a little bit when he, when it, when he felt it go in. But he just, he just brushed it off. Just like, yeah, whatever. All right, let's go. And he obviously had to sit for his five minutes, but the minute he, five minutes he was meant to be sat, resting, making sure he was all right. He was up and about trying to find more of the animals, and oh, it was he did really well with it. So proud of him, really good, really good. So that's the we do news, we girl news, some exciting news. We got the letter in this week to say that she's got her nursery place. Uh, we applied for this months ago. Um, and I think we had up until the end of February to, to get that in. And uh, the good news is that the letter came through this week that she has got a nursery place five days a week, which was a bit more than we'd expected. Um, but we'll, we'll take it. Because <laughs> I think it'll be really good for her. I think it will be really good for her. So she's going to the nursery, which is adjacent to the school that Daniel's at. So it's going to be really good for dropping off and picking up. Um, and it's the same nursery that Daniel went to, sort of on and off in between COVID lockdowns and, and what we could do with them. Fingers crossed she gets a full year uh, at nursery without any of that sort of stuff going on. That would be really, really good. So that's news for her for this week. And I think that just about wraps up my week. It's been a busy one. Um, we've done a bit of this and that and the other. And we've had Easter and obviously we had Easter and Easter eggs and... All that sort of stuff. Thankfully, I didn't get too much chocolate because um, I didn't lose any weight this week. Weight, weight loss challenge, zero loss this week. And I have a feeling I might put on a little bit because of Easter this coming week. But we'll see how it goes. Um, I've tried to be good at the beginning of the week because I know up until this point, I've tried to be good and only have a little bit of chocolate each day. And I have eaten quite a bit of fruit. 
and I've tried to keep the meals calorie controlled and, and, and not too bad. So hopefully going into the weekend where I know I'm going to possibly have quite a bit of stuff. Um, yeah, <laughs> fingers crossed on that one. Uh, there was just one other thing is that I, I, you can probably see on the screen behind me. I've been editing the um, videos from the taste testing of the, the Thai snacks that we got. Um, that is still something I'm in the middle of editing. It's taking a bit of time to get done. Um, and hopefully I will get it out on the M&M World channel at some point. I know I wanted to get it out this week, but with everything else, I think I'm having that chance. And that sums up this week. Um, I know for a fact that next week's going to be an exciting one. I haven't yet decided on what my question of the week is going to be. This week, this week's was kind of a, I haven't got much, very long to do stuff, so I'm going to try something different. And, and I did. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you enjoyed hearing what I've been up to this week. On that note, I would like to wish you all a very happy week. I hope everything goes well for you and anything you want to get done, you manage to get done. Thanks again for listening. Remember, this can be listened to as a podcast available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts and various other podcasting places on the Tinter web. And of course, it is if you're listening to it in audio or any format, it is also available on our YouTube channel, M&M's World, where you will find these podcasts along with other footage and other videos that we release about stuff we've been up to. Thank you very much for watching. Till next time. Good night from me. It's good night from him. Bye bye.